All right, peace to the gods, peace to the goddesses, man. I am back with another motherfucking video. And we're going to talk about the largest lake in South Carolina, which is a man-made lake, Lake Marion, which has a black town. Yes, you heard that right, a black town underneath it. So let's get straight into it. Now, I know the mainstream media talks about Lake Lanier in Georgia with a black town underneath it, but it's not the only one. And it's hundreds, if not thousands more across America. But Lake Marion, right? Lake Marion is a large man-made lake in central South Carolina, right? It has a 315-mile shoreline. 315 miles, y'all, right? And it covers nearly 110,000 acres, y'all. That is fucking insane. Let's keep it going, though. All right, so Lake Marion was created by the construction of the Santee Dam in 1941. Remember, when they start damming shit, that means they're flooding out towns. Stay with me. This dam also created another lake in South Carolina, Lake Moultrie. And all this was, was, was started and created and done by none other than the evil pale face, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Evil fucker. Now this says the Santee was dammed in the 1940s to supply hydroelectric power as a part of rural electrification. Like I said, by who? Franklin D. Roosevelt. Now, I have a video, right, of the lake. And I recorded it while going to Georgia, right? To pull up on my big bro that I deployed with. And all my South Carolina peas, right? If you took 95 South to Georgia and 95 North back from Georgia, you've seen this lake. You've went, you went over this lake and had no idea what was going on. Just look how huge this motherfucker is. And you can't even see it. Like I said, the shoreline is 315 miles, y'all. That's a lot of fucking land, right? And it's a whole black town under this land so check this out and i'm gonna get more into the history of this town named ferguson that's under lake mayor a man-made lake Now, this says Ferguson is a ghost town, a former lumber mill settlement in Orangeburg County, South Carolina. It says the company town was owned by Northern Lumber Lumberman Francis Beeler and Benjamin Ferguson, which that is cap. The people who created this town was from South Carolina. But let's keep going. It says operations were highly profitable as the Santee Cypress Company had purchased valuable timberland for a little as two dollar two dollars an acre. Now, like I said, a lot of this is cap is cap, but I'm here to help y'all decipher this shit. Now, this is a South Carolina university, a University of South Carolina uh, research on this, right? This is just one article. I got two more I'm going to show y'all. Now, in this article, right, there's some students at the University of South Carolina basically interviewed someone who was born in the in the 30s, right? And they was taking his accounts of what he saw after the, the town was already basically abandoned, right? And not to mention, my previous video about the mounds and pyramids in South Carolina, well, there was an Indian mound in the same area of this lake. Okay, let's get back on topic, though. All right, so this says to attract work workers from around the world, the company invested a lot of money to build Ferguson. Mind you, this town was already built way before where they're saying it was built. It was already here, right? This town was said to have worker and management house, a hotel, and a state-of-the-art school. It also had its own hospital. And like many company towns, its own script to pay employees. Now, let's look at the population. At its peak, it had a population of about 2,500. And it was the South's biggest Cypress lumber operation, which means it was the most wealthy lumber mill in the South of all the Southern states. Pay attention, y'all, but we're going to keep going. Now, we're going to stick to the population of this town, because I know y'all saying, how do you know it's a black town? Let's talk about the population. Now, I think I cut out the part where it mentioned the, uh, the 1910 census on this town, right? Which is allegedly, which is allegedly the only census on the town. Which I'm having trouble finding that census, and I know why. But I don't need it because it says the town was abandoned and drowned by Lake Marion, displacing 2,500 to 3,000 people. The majority African American tenant farmers in the surrounding communities. Hmm. And if you've been on this page, you know the so called African Americans, the so called Black Americans. It's actually the American Indians who are the American Aborigines. Now, Check this article. It says, of course, the original habit inhabitants of the island we know as Ferguson or the Congaree, Indian tribe, right? 
Now, the Congaree will also be the Catawba, which is another quote unquote Indian tribe, which would the, the Catawba would be tied to the Santee, the Santee to the Wateree, the Wateree to the Waccamaw, Waccamaw to the Wahi, the Wahi to the Yamasee, the Yamasee to the, to the Timicoan, the Timicoan to the, to the Geechees. It's all the same people. They're all niggas, right? Black people, Indians, because Indian and nigger means the same thing. Do I need to put that in here real quick? All right, fuck it. I'm going to do it. Hold on, y'all. Now, what's crazy is I had to go to a screen recorder from 2021 of this definition that I took because the Oxford English Dictionary took this definition offline, not because it was offensive, but because it exposed the truth. All right. So let's get into it. N-I-G-G-E-R is the word. And TikTok, don't block my video because y'all let all type of people say niggas all day on this bitch. All right, so the first definition is a dark-skinned person of sub-Saharan African origin or descent, right? Which is cap. And I'm going to show you why because when you scroll down to this definition 3A, right? It states a dark-skinned person of any origin. In early U.S., used usually with reference to American Indian. American Indians. Now... Before we get back on topic, we're not going to play no games. Native Americans have never been called niggas. Historically, now, ever. But let's get back to this bill. Now, here's another article stating that this town was thriving. Right? It had church, school, a hotel, which they should put an S at the end of these because it was more than one of each. And among other things that it says, right? All right, let's keep rolling. Now, in this article, we're going to go down to a part right here, right? It say the little island became a boom town, right? And was one of the first to have indoor plumbing and gas lighting in the streets along the roads of workers' cottages. A large sewer and raw water system still traverses the island under the foundation. So you telling me this newly built island was the first to have sewer, indoor plumbing, and lighting before the rest of South Carolina? That's why I say, y'all, a lot of this shit count, but I'm here to, to, to decipher this bullshit. So let's keep going. Now, they claim that the logging halted in 1915. And they claim the second owner died in 1924. Now, part two come out of this, which I'm going to have to make like part six. We're going to dive deeper into what really happened to these owners. Because during this same time frame, the 1920s, late 1800s, 1920s, it was a lot of so-called race rides going on. And these race rides were where these pale faces, these crackers, was running into black towns, burning them down, killing our people. And then a lot of this shit got flooded. So... Now what I'm going to show y'all next is some just some pictures of what's left of this town from when the water receded and started exposing this town that was underneath it, which is how they found out. Or they already knew, but they had to tell the public, like, hey, yeah, it was a, it was a nigga town under here. It's a black town. How do you know it's a black town? Well, they found grave sites. The census records state that majority of the population was black people, so-called African-American. And then you have this, quote-unquote, Indian pottery. Indian, nigga, same thing. Point blank period. But I'm going to let these videos play. This is part one to this video. It's so much information on this shit, y'all. I'm probably going to have to make like six parts to this motherfucker. And they even had an Episcopal church. The remains of an Episcopal church. You know, like the AME church, or African Methodist Episcopal, Episcopal church. Eh, come on, pay attention, y'all. I'm telling y'all right now, this is what's left of a pulpit according to what they say. All right. But they say the church, this church, the remainder of this church burnt down recently. Well, it burnt down like three times. And I was telling one of my partners recently that like the churches was first used as gatherings for our people to keep records. So they were burning the churches to lose the records. But this is part one. Peace to the gods. Peace to the goddesses. Part two coming soon.